All right, so we have our uh, EC2 instance now managed by an auto scaling group. And the great thing is, is that if we terminate this instance, this auto scaling group will launch another uh, instance to meet our particular capacity. Um, the only thing though, is that if we were to have multiple EC2 instances running like three of them, um, how would you distribute traffic to them all, right? So, you know, you have an IP address coming in from the internet, uh, but let's say you want to evenly distribute it. And that's where a load balancer comes into play. And even if you have a single server, you should always have a load balancer because it just makes it a lot easier for you to scale when you need to. And you it acts as an intermediate layer where you can attach a web application firewall. You can attach an SSL certificate for free. So there's a lot of reasons to have a load balancer. So what we'll do is go down below on the left-hand side and we're gonna make our way over to load balancers and we're gonna create ourselves a new load balancer. So I'm gonna hit create load balancer here. And you're gonna see we have a lot of options, application load balancer, network load balancer, gateway load balancer, and then the classic load balancer. And so we are uh, running an application. So I'm going to create an application load balancer. And here I'm gonna say my ALB um, for an application load balancer. This is gonna be internet facing. It's gonna be IPv4. Um, we're gonna let it launch in the default um, subnet. And we're gonna choose the same, the same uh, uh, AZs, right? so that we get the same subnets as our, that are in our auto scaling group. And that's really important, okay? And then here, um, you know, we need to have a security group. And I just feel like selecting the same one here because that should work, no problem there. And we want to make sure that we can listen on port 80 and then it's going to forward it to a, a, um, a target group. And it looks like I might have a target group there from before. So just to reduce that confusion, you won't have this problem. I'm just gonna double check if that's true. So do I have a target group from there from before? Yes, I do. That came from, I'm not sure. It might've been created by um, Elastic Beanstalk and wasn't deleted. Okay, so I'll go back over to here just so there's less confusion. And we were selecting our target group. So we're gonna have to create a new target group. So we'll go over here. And here you can choose whether it's instance, IP, Lambda, application load balancer. So you could point it specifically to an IP address. And so if it was a static IP address, that would make sense. Uh, apparently you can port, uh, point it directly to instances. I don't remember seeing that option before. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, no, sorry, that makes sense because I would go to uh, VPCs, okay? Or sorry, uh, ASGs, auto scaling groups. It's just that you are pointing them to auto scaling groups. You're not pointing them to instances. So that's why that's confusing. So I'm gonna say, my um, target group, it'll be for port 80 here. Um, protocol HTTP one is fine. We want it to be in the same um, VPC, so that's fine as well. And down below we have our health check. And so the forward slash means that it's gonna hit the index HTML page. And so if it gets back um, something healthy and that, that something healthy is gonna be um, uh, port 80, then it's gonna be considered good. And then we can say the threshold of the check. So I'm just gonna reduce this so it's not so crazy. So we'll say three, uh, two, and then 10, okay? And then it expects back a 200, which I think that's what we'll get back. So we'll go ahead and hit next. And so now we have our target group and it should register instances. So it's saying, hey, we detected this and this fits the requirements for this. So this is now, uh, this EC2 instance is now in this target group, okay? So we can go back over here and we can now drop down and choose, whoops, hit the refresh button and choose our target group. So I'm not seeing it here. So I'm gonna go back over here. Oh, we didn't create it, okay. And now we can go back, hit refresh and there it is. And yeah, that looks all good. So we'll go ahead and hit create load balancer. We can view the load balancers and these create really fast. If we scroll on up, what we can do is now access our server through this DNS name, okay? So we copy that, paste that on in there. Does it work? Not as of yet. So if it's not working there, because we did say, look at these instances, another way is to directly associate your auto scaling group with the load balancer. So if I go into here and we hit uh, edit, there is a way, aha, load balancer. So we want to associate it this way and we want to say this target group here. 
And also while we're here, we might as well set it to ELB. So it's going to use the ELB tech. So that makes it so the auto scaling group, if it wants to uh, restart a server, it's going to use the ELB's tech, which is a lot more sophisticated. And then what we'll do is go hit update. Okay. And now if we go back over to our load balancer, I'm just going to close some of these tabs. So it's a little less confusing. Uh, load balancer here. I think we should be able to see through here whether it is seeing it. Let's go down below, listeners, monitoring, integrated services. No, it's going to be through the target group. Okay. I mean, it already had it there. So maybe it's just that it hasn't finished the check. So over here it has a health status check. Oh, now it's healthy, okay. So if it's healthy in the target group and the load balancer is pointing to it, that it should technically work. So we're going to go ahead and uh, copy the DNS again here, make a new tab, paste it in. And there it is. Okay, so that's how you're going to access um, all your all your instances that are within your auto scaling groups, you're going to always go through the DNS. And so if you had a row 53 uh, domain, like you had your domain managed by AWS, you just point to the load balancer. And that's how you'd hook it up. So that's pretty much it. So yeah, there you go.